Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. One dead, four injured after highway shooting crash. A man is dead and four people hospitalized following a vehicular collision and shooting on the North South Highway on Sunday. Reports are that about 5.40 p.m., five persons were traveling in a Nissan Silphy motor car from an event in St. Anne when on reaching a section of Ocherias. They were intercepted by three vehicles whose occupants opened gunfire on them before escaping in the area. The driver, who sustained injuries, drove off in search of medical attention and lost control of the vehicle, which crashed into a ravine in the vicinity of Caymanus Gardens in St. Catherine. The police were contacted and the occupants of the car were assisted to hospital where they were admitted. A man known only as Dada of Greenwich Farm Kingston 13 addressed to come to his injuries. The Portmore police are investigating. Talks offices to close early tomorrow. Talks offices island-wide will be closed early tomorrow afternoon. Tax Administration Jamaica TAG says the closure, which begins at 2 p.m. on February 21, is to facilitate a general staff meeting. The meeting will involve team members of all tax offices and business locations on that day. Tax offices will remain closed on Wednesday for the public holiday. Normal operations will resume on Thursday. 16-year-old shot at friend's home in Westmoreland. A Westmoreland teen was shot and injured after accompanying his friend to his house at a farm district in the parish on Sunday afternoon. Reports are that the 16-year-old student was at a football field when he was approached by the male friend who invited him home. On arrival, the teen and his friend entered the house when the latter took a firearm from a chest of drawer. Police report that the friend allegedly then removed the magazine and thereafter pointed the firearm at the now injured teen and shot him. The injured teen ran from the house and raised an alarm. He was subsequently rushed to the Savannah Elmar Public General Hospital by residents, where he was treated and admitted for gunshot wounds to the region of his left knee. Investigations are ongoing. Welder shot dead in St. Catherine Home Invasion A 42-year-old welder was shot dead during a brazen attack by gunmen at his home in Clare Hill in Spanish Town, St. Catherine on Monday morning. He has been identified as Damien Simit, otherwise called Kemar, a resident of Sunrise Avenue in Quarry Hill. Police have not yet established a motive for the attack. Information reaching reporter is that shortly before midday, Simit was at home when he was pounced upon by a gunman who opened fire hitting him all over the body. The men then fled the scene on foot. The police were summoned and when they arrived, saw the now deceased suffering from what appeared to be gunshot wounds all over his body. He was assisted to the Spanish Town Hospital where he was pronounced dead. The police, upon processing the crime scene, retrieved seven 9mm spent casing. Second Grand Bahia worker killed near hotel identified. The employee of the Grand Bahia Principal Hotel in Runaway Bay, St. Anne, was killed in a hit and run in the vicinity of the hotel this morning, has been identified. He is 40 year old bartender Franz Johnson of Farm Heights, Montego Bay, St. James. Police reports are that the incident happened around 8 20 a.m. Information reaching reported is that Johnson was walking along the side of the road towards the hotel when he was hit by a great hit early on. He was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Johnson is the second employee of the hotel to pass away in the same vicinity in the last three days. On Saturday, 25-year-old Chef Omin Brown of San Maria Drive Hopewell District in St. Anne died from injuries he sustained from a crash in the same vicinity. The manager for external relations at the Grammar Hill Principal Hotel, Fabian Brown, said both incidents are beyond unfortunate. So we have had two very unfortunate situations. To say it is unfortunate is really an understatement. On the weekend, we had a motor vehicle accident in the vicinity of the hotel, and this morning, unfortunately, we had another accident. This one was a hit and run, but in both cases, members of the staff were involved. Naturally, you would appreciate the gloom and the challenge and the stress that has overcome the entire theme that we have. They are doing their best right now to weather the storm as it were, he said. Brown underscored that counting is taking place, but the families of the employees have also been contacted. Our Human Resource Department is working assiduously in terms of counseling and support to assist in very, very challenging and trying times. You would appreciate that to have any of your colleagues been impacted is in itself a challenge, let alone a situation where you understand 
that there is a fatality involved, he noted. Six years of grief. It has been six years since a partially decomposed body of 15-year-old Shanika Gray was found in bushes in the urban community in the parish of St. James. And while the girl's name has become a distant memory in the minds of many, her family is still filled with grief as one of the suspected perpetrators of this heinous crime has not yet been brought to justice, said Shanika's aunt, Nikita Gray. The body of the young girl was found by a search party of family and friends on February 1, 2017, three days after she was reported missing. She had multiple stab wounds to the chest. Shanika was last seen after attending the funeral of a former Green Pond High School student in Lottery, St. James. She was a grade 10 student at the same secondary school. In the days following the discovery of the girl's body, then 23-year-old Maria Morrison of Bombay District, Canova, and 31-year-old Gregory Roberts, a taxi driver of Marantown, St. James, were arrested and charged for an interviews with the police. However, Nikita told reporters that the family has not received any form of closure as the court case is still ongoing six years later. There has been several times when we have gotten dates for us to be at court, but there has been no progress in this courthouse in Montego Bay. As the case calls up, it gets put off. For the past six years, that is what it has been like, the girl's aunt explained. She continued as a family, you feel as if you don't have much input when you are in the courthouse, but the accused can see what they want to see the entire time. It feels as if the system is on the victim's side. Whenever we go there, it seems that the justice system is more for the defendant. The men were expected to stand trial in the St. James Circuit Court in November 2018, but the case was put off due to lack of jurors. At that time, an application was made for the trial to be held outside of St. James, as Robert cited concerns for his safety, but that application was denied. Since then, Marissa has pleaded guilty to the role in the murder of the schoolgirl and was reported the sentence to 15 years in prison. However, Roberts is expected to return to court in March. In the meantime, Nikita told reporters that the grief process has not been easy for the family. Describing Chanika as the well-behaved child whom she had the privilege of raising until she was taken away from her family, the aunt stated that she had been battling depression for the past six years. She said that January and February have been the hardest months as a constant memory of finding the jazz body in the bushes had taken a toll on her emotionally. I think most of us are depressed. My mother is the only one who has kept strong since the whole thing happened. But I was the one who had to do the running up and down. I had to see the body and do everything. So when it comes to this time of the year, all that depression comes down on me and I am unable to function even at work, Nikita said. As for Shinika's father, Nikita said he too has found it difficult to cope with the loss of the girl. My brother is very depressed, but if you look at him, it would not seem that way. But I know because he's just working non-stop and he has never talked about it. He almost lost his finger recently because he's overworking himself. He has been trying to find things to do so he doesn't have to think about this, Nikita told reporters. The incidents surrounding the girl's brutal murder have remained unknown to the family. It is speculated that Chinika, in her attempt to return to the home of her mother, where she was staying for the weekend, entered a taxi in downtown Montego Bay. The child's body was found a few miles away. Nikita said that her family had still not come to grips with the reality that the girl whom they cherished and protected had met a brutal murder on one of the few days that she took public transportation. We cry all the time. We can't do anything without thinking about her. She wasn't a child who just let go on the road. We took her to school and we pick her up back. There were two days in the week when her daddy couldn't pick her up and we arranged for a taxi to take her, she said. The girl's aunt added before her voice cracked, so when all of this happened, we were wondering how could this be possible. We are still not even sure. Shanika's mother has also been struggling with the child's murder, Nikita told reporters. The mother is depressed as well. During the time that it happened, she could not continue working or stay at the house. She was there alone and the constant reminder was too much, so she went to Florida and did not come back. I talked to her at least once a month and every time we talk, the emotions are a lot to handle, she said. Please remember to subscribe, like, share and click the notification bell.